what is up guys so our builds are getting a little bigger today i'm going to show you how to make this garden shed garden closet whatever you want to call it they're super cool out of just using fence pickets yes we're still on that fence picket roll because they're still cheap and two by fours finally two by fours are starting to come back down this was a super fun build and right now these sheds this size are selling for this much this build cost me $160 with the hardware. Without the hardware, $140. Talk about profit margins here. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to ship lap your own fence pickets. That way you do not have to spend that extra money on ship lapped material. So this would be a great project for yourself. Or if you are interested in the selling aspect of this, they will sell like crazy. You do not have to paint them up like I did, but it creates an awesome showpiece and an awesome thing to stage up. Did you notice how I had everything laid out in there? Staging, staging is key. That being said, let's go ahead and dive into this video. Like always, we are gonna begin by cutting our parts. And the super cool thing about this build is it's all built out of standard two by fours and fence pickets. Yep, that's pretty much it besides our hardware. And that's all that I'm doing here is making two by two material out of two by four material. Just ripping off the outer edge and then cutting an inch and a half and an inch and a half. You can get two two by twos out of one two by four. It's a heck of a lot cheaper than buying two by twos at the store. And these two by twos will be used for our frame. Now, unlike most of my other videos, I will not be putting a cut list into this description. I'm going to try to walk you through this the best that I can. There are just too many parts, too many angles, too many pitches, different things like that. But I'm going to try to describe this to you so you can build this on your own. On my other builds, I usually just mention that the plans are available, but on this build, they would actually come in really handy because it will have exact cuts, exact angles, everything that you need. And there's over 30 pages of exploded views and diagrams, everything that you need to actually see what you are doing and what you need to be doing. And as always, I'll throw the link in the description to my Etsy shop so you can pick that up if you would like. With our frame parts cut out of our 2 by 2s I'm now going to put pocket holes in two sides of every part that is a cross member. You'll see how that comes into play here in a moment. And i also give you the lengths of each one of those parts as we get to them. And the Craig 720 Pro makes this task a breeze. Now we're going to start by assembling our side walls. Each side wall will have two 2x2s two that are 72 inches long and two cross members on the end that are 20 and 3 quarters. Our center board is 69 inches long and also installed with pocket hole screws. And remember, you'll need two of these side walls. And now for our back wall. Our back wall will be using two 72 inch boards on the end. And we'll also be using two 41 inch boards for the top and the bottom. The top and bottom will be inset. And now I'm just finding my equal spacing for my center boards. We will need two center boards that are 69 inches long. I cannot stand working on the ground, so everything that I do will be up on saw horses of some kind. Could have done this a little bit better, but it still worked. And now I'm cutting my fence pickets down to 23 and 3 quarters for my side walls. So what I've ran into here lately on the 5 and a half inch wide fence pickets is that they're more likely to be a half of an inch thick instead of 5 eighths that they state. So for this build, I actually looked for the half of an inch fence pickets. So just dig through the pile until you can find enough of the half inch to do the job, or you can plane them down to a half of an inch. Now I'm going to show you how to make your own shiplap. So you can do this using a dado blade, which in this case, that's what I'm going to do. Or you can actually use a single blade, stand the board up on its edge, cut it that way, leave the settings the same, lay it flat, and make the exact same cut. This will make what we call a rabbit. So for shiplap, I like a rabbit that is about half of the board's thickness. So since we're using a half of an inch material, I'm gonna set my width for one quarter of an inch, and I'm gonna set the blade height for one quarter of an inch as well. And this is what your shiplap should look like. So basically all we did was make the cut on one side, flip the board over, and then repeat it for the other side. It's as simple as that, and they sell this stuff for a fortune. You can also do this process with a router, but if you're doing it with a single blade, it would just add two extra cuts to each board, but I've done it a hundred times in the past. Your big box stores are wanting $12.50 for this exact same board with chip lap, 
or you just made your own for $1.99. And I know how we woodworkers are. We're always looking for a reason to buy a new tool. This would be the perfect reason to pick up a dado stack. It would definitely pay for itself in just this build alone. So there's several different ways that you can attach your sideboards. I've seen it done with your old school, you know, overlap, just like this. If you do it in this manner, you will not actually have to put this rabbit cut into the material. You can just use square cut, but it gives it this look. I'm not a big fan of that look. I'm more of a fan of the shiplap look, and there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. You can butt them all up together, if you like the clean, tight shiplap look, or you can use spacers and leave a little gap for the traditional shiplap look. For this build, I'm actually just gonna use a couple of washers just to use as my spacers. Then I'll have that exact same space just this little bead going all the way around. This will not hurt anything because of the joint that we put in it. Even with that bit of a gap, it's still overlays. And that is the point of shiplap and the rabbit joint. So you can go all the way out in this case to a half of an inch. So now with our shiplap boards cut, let's go ahead and install those onto our side walls. For this build, I'm using exterior wood glue and brad nails. And for my spacers, I'm using washers. These washers are about an eighth of an inch thick each. Each one of these walls will take around 13 of these pieces, depending on how big of the gap that you leave. And this is what a wall looks like. Now I'm not worried about the occasional little dog ear that was left on that fence in the corners because that would all be covered with trim. Now let's do the same thing for the back wall. Now for the back wall, even though the wall itself totals only 44 inches wide, the shiplap boards will be 48 inches long and this will allow us to leave a two inch overhang on each side. The reason for that is the side walls will actually set up against these boards. You'll see that here in a moment. Okay, so with our walls built, it's time to assemble our main frame. So I'm gonna get a young back to help me out with this and we're just gonna put up our back wall. Now you can see where that two inch overhang comes into play. The side wall actually sets right into it. And then from the inside, I'm gonna be using two and a half inch screws to hold all of this together. And then we'll just repeat this process for the other side. And this is where we are at. It's starting to look like a little shed. And now I'm going to put the 44 inch header in. And this will be the only full size 2x4 that I use for this. And as you can see, I've already pre-drilled my pocket hose. So using 2.5 inch pocket hose screws, just like I did for the rest of this build, we're going to install this header. And for some reason, pocket hose screws get a bad rap. So I'm gonna do something stupid. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up my 200 pound self just to show that it will hold. Actually, the sheer weight of a pocket hose screw is 700 pounds. Now it's time to build our trusses. And I'm just cutting miters for that. I'm cutting them on 40 degrees. These parts are 41 and a half inches long from tip to tip. Now I'm just cutting the inside supports for these. This miter will be set at 50 degrees. So I'm just gonna use some glue and a brad nailer to temporarily hold this together until I can screw it together. And we will need two of these trusses identical. There will be a third truss for the center and there will be one small difference. And that difference is, is the top board will not be an inch and a half thick. It will only be three quarters of an inch thick. You see that there? That is how this metal, once we get to that part, will actually lay flush against all of our pieces. So I'm gonna call the thicker of the three trusses the outside trusses. And on those outside trusses, we will need to attach a piece of three quarter inch material cut at 40 degrees at the top. This three quarter by three quarter strip will actually be what holds the roofing in place. Again, you'll see that just here in a moment. 
but for now I'm just gluing and screwing those into place. Now when you get your sheet metal, most of it will cover 24 inches at least. So that means it'll be a little bit wider than that. So when I lay my trusses out to actually screw this into place, I'm gonna take that into account. Although the metal will actually be attached to the two outer trusses, the center truss and the back truss need to be positioned so that the back truss is sitting over the back wall and the center truss is sitting over the front header. So that is why you see me tying these two trusses together at that exact measurement. Now the front truss is what I call a floating or a false truss. It's just going to be for show pretty much and an overhang. Now you can decorate it up any way that you would like. And I'm just putting in some three quarter inch scraps. And any time that I use three quarter inch by an inch and a half, that's all that I've done is taking a two by four and ripped out three quarter inch pieces. Now to install this into our other trusses, I've taken pieces of 4x4 four four and put pocket holes going in opposite directions. Just make sure to offset these pocket holes just a bit, that way you do not drill through the same hole. But I'm not going to attach this to the other trusses just yet. We'll set that aside and do that after we paint. So after installing a 44 inch base plate here, it's time to start working on the doors. And like I mentioned earlier, anytime that I'm using three quarters of an inch material like this, that's all I've done is taking a two by four and ripped three quarter inch strips out of it. And for these door frames, I'll be needing eight pieces that are 66 and three quarters of an inch long and six pieces that are 21 and three quarters of an inch. All of our parts that we had cut at 21 and three quarter, we will need pocket holes on both ends of these parts. And now we would just lay these parts out and assemble these doors with an inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. Two boards on the ends and one for the very center. And you will repeat this process for a second door. Now with the frames made, let's dress them up a little bit. Now we will not be attaching these just yet. We'll do that here in a bit. So we'll set all of these door parts aside because they are ready for paint. So now let's go ahead and put our two jointed trusses on top of the shed and mark the edges of the walls. I want to go ahead and cut the parts for my trusses and that mark will tell me where to start the shiplap. I just like to have all of my parts cut before I paint. And this is how the false truss will fit. So it's going to be up to you if you want to go all the way up with your shiplap or if you'd like to put a piece of screen in there and kind of leave a little vent. And again, before I paint, I like to have all of my parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my trim out of fence pickets. I'm cutting them at one and a half inch wide. And I hate painting almost as much as I hate sanding, almost. Just something about it, I do not like painting. But I'm about to show you a little trick here that sometimes works on getting you out of painting. So you notice that look? That's the, he's not doing it right look. And I felt it, I felt it, you know, like in the the hair in the back of your neck. So do you notice a smooth transition of the handoff there? Yeah. And she did an awesome job. A heck of a lot better job than what I would have done. So to this point, any exterior part should be painted. Anything that will be shown. So now I'm gonna put my two assembled trusses on, square those up, and install a starter board for the rest of my shiplap. And the reason why I want to do this is that way there is a seamless transition between the building itself and the trusses. And the easiest way to find the perfect angle is just to mark this starter board on the back. Make those cuts and then fasten it to the trusses. Now this will ensure that everything will be perfect. Now on the front, I've actually put an inch and a half spacer on my header because all of my trim will be an inch and a half. Make sure to fasten only to the truss itself and not to the actual building. And this is why we're actually gonna be taking this off. That way we can finish going up with our shiplap without having to work overhead. And now we're just taking our parts that we cut earlier, getting our angles, making those cuts. We're gonna glue and nail these into place. Now this is the front. Now on the back, we will do the exact same thing except go all the way up. The front, I decided to leave a vent. I'm also using those same eighth inch washers for my spacing. Now we can attach our front truss or our false truss. So with that installed, let's put some metal on this thing. 
It will only take one piece of corrugated metal for this build. So we will need to cut two pieces at 41 and a half inches. So with our metal cut, we will place them on both sides of our trusses, sitting perfectly on our three quarter inch strips. And now it's time to put some screws in. You don't have to go out and buy big box of sheet metal screws. This build doesn't take very many. You can buy small bags of these screws and the rubber washers that go along with them for about a dollar a bag. I will be pre-drilling all of these screws before I actually put them in. And what actually helps to keep this bit from walking, because any type of a drill bit wants to walk, especially on metal, is a super handy little pop tool. I actually featured it in my last video, but one side is a spring-loaded nail punch, and the other side is a spring-loaded nail or screw starter. And in this case, it's a drill bit starter. I'll make sure to throw a link in the description. And at this point, if you would like to silicone the sides, go for it. Now this is something that I should have added whenever I was building the frame of these trusses, but I didn't. So I'm throwing in some extra three quarter inch material just to help to support this roof. You know what they say, hindsight's 2020, but it wasn't too late to fix it in this instance. And this is what it looks like with those four extra boards that I added, much more sturdy. Now for the ridge cap, and this is not an actual ridge cap. The actual ridge cap was over $20. This drip edge, it was only $4. And since the shed's so small, a full size ridge cap would look odd. Plus I only needed a couple feet. And there is your finished top. Again, we'll go in later on, we'll put some screen back behind that, maybe just so wasps and stuff don't, you know, set up in there, or you can just leave it open as a vent. It's up to you. Now let's go ahead and put this top into place and get it fastened. Having an extra hand definitely helps for this situation. And to attach this to my building, I'm using truss ties. You can pick these up for about a buck a piece. And I'm going to put one in each corner. It will be more than enough to hold everything into place. So let's go ahead and finish these doors up. With the painted side down, we'll go ahead and put our trim into place. And then we'll put our shiplap boards on top. We're going to glue everything up real nice and then add our shiplap boards. The shiplap boards will actually hold our decorative pieces into place. There's an old saying where something comes in twos. Yeah, don't you love it when that happens? And even better, <laughs> over 400 screws to join. So after a couple of choice words, get back to work, gapping everything out, and then if you have any type of little gap like in this last board, you can easily just push that back into place before nail. And now I'm just marking out my decorative pieces. That way I make sure to get some extra nails and some extra screws into those. We don't want those falling off. And look at that door. How much do you think that it would cost you to buy a barn door like this? I mean, it would cost you a fortune. But anyway, so repeat the process for the second barn door. They're going to be identical. I'm putting screws in this just to help to support everything. Now to install the door, I like to leave an eighth of an inch gap all the way around it. So I have an eighth inch shims. And then once I get everything into place, I install my strap hinges. And we'll just repeat this process for the second door. And you notice that little gap in between the two doors. This is so they can open without catching on the back. We'll fix that here in a moment. So we're gonna go ahead and start installing our trim just cut the length. Now let's fix that little gap between the two doors. Now this is like a door overlay board. I'm really not sure what the actual name is for it, but it's an inch and a half wide, same material that we have been using, and I'm just installing it from the back. Now I'm just taking a piece of scrap cut off that's already painted to make a stop block for the doors. And there you have it. You can pick out the hardware of your choice for the handles, but look at this thing. What would you pay for this beautiful shiplap building? Better yet, what would someone else pay? Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I hope that you were able to take something away from this video, even if it was just a little tip or a trick. 
If you have any suggestions for me on how this could be even cooler, let me know. I'd actually thought of a couple of different ideas, you know, uh, flip out side doors, things like that, that would lean down and make a table. There's all kinds of different things that you could do with this. Our Patreon community is blowing up, so make sure to check in on that. And I want you to push yourself to build something bigger. So that's your homework for this week. Build something larger. So let's get out of the smalls. We're still going to circle back around. We're going to do smaller items because small is sell. But we need to start mixing in larger items like this. And this would be more of a custom order. You build one prototype or something like this. You get pictures out there. You get pictures of yourself with this. Let people know what you can do. Let people know your craftsmanship. And then they'll place the custom order with you and then you can start pumping them out. And then the snowball effect will come in. So someone will see what they have and they will want one. That is the nature of the beast. People want what other people have. Make sure to leave your cards, leave your name, leave your contact information so they can pass it on. It doesn't have to be this, but build something again out of your comfort zone. We're pushing ourselves out. And that is how you grow. That is how you grow as a woodworker. And that is also how you grow in business. So until next time, guys, go out there, get creative and push yourself. See ya.